The next property that we see is the basic nature of ammonia. And how do we know that it's basic in nature? Ammonia actually is highly soluble in water. So when it reacts with water, you get ammonium hydroxide. The compound is ammonium hydroxide. This ammonium hydroxide splits into ammonium ions and hydroxyl ions. It is the presence of this hydroxyl ion that makes it a base. Therefore, it converts red litmus solution or paper into blue. And also, a colorless phenophthalin becomes pink in color to prove that ammonium hydroxide is a weak base. Why do we call it as a weak base? Because it has the concentration of hydroxyl ions is less. Less concentration of hydroxyl ions. When we see this ammonia, we can call it as liquid or liquefied ammonia. This is ammonia gas in the liquid form. There is no water added. The next one is liquor ammonia. This liquor ammonia is nothing but ammonia in water that is ammonium hydroxide. Other words, aqueous ammonia is liquor ammonia. So these are the two terms we need to learn about this. And this is about the basic nature. Neutralization reactions are the next thing that comes through basic nature where ammonium hydroxide being a weak base is capable of reacting with acids like hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid to give salt and water. So, it splits this way to give ammonium chloride plus water. Next, ammonium hydroxide also reacts with sulfuric acid to give ammonium sulfate Plus water. The third one, ammonium hydroxide, reacts with nitric acid to give ammonium nitrate plus water. So these are the three neutralization reactions where the base and the acid is completely neutralized to give you salt and water. Next we move on to precipitation reactions wherein a base that is ammonium hydroxide which is a weak base this reacts with salt 1 to give a base 2 which is a precipitate 
which means it is insoluble and it settles down plus another salt too which will be soluble. So this is the basic role of the precipitation reactions and ammonium hydroxide is an important reagent that is used to identify various cations by the color of the precipitates. So that's what we are going to see. We are also learning about the color of the precipitates when it is in normal and when excess of ammonium hydroxide is added, what is its solubility. So two things are going to be done today with the help of reactions. Okay. The first one that we have is ferrous. How do we find this? Using ferrous sulfate solution. When this reacts with ammonium hydroxide, it forms ferrous hydroxide. So here, the compounds, they undergo double decomposition and the radicals are interchanged. So you get ferrous hydroxide or iron 2 hydroxide and ammonium sulfate. There are two ammonium ions, so two here and it is balanced. Now this is the base 2 which is a precipitate which is a dirty green precipitate. So this will be the color of the dirty green precipitate. Next we move on to when this ammonium hydroxide is added in excess it is still insoluble which means the precipitate is still there. Okay. Next we move on to ferric Fe3 plus we use ferric chloride solution and react it with ammonium hydroxide to give base 2 would be iron 3 hydroxide plus ammonium chloride. This again is a precipitate. 3 so 3 here. This is a reddish brown in color. It's a reddish brown precipitate which is of this color. So this is the color that is formed when ferric chloride or any ferric ion containing salt reacts with ammonium hydroxide, it gives you a reddish brown precipitate. The next we have zinc. We could use zinc sulfate. By the way, this also is insoluble in excess. So this precipitate continues. Zinc sulfate reacts with ammonium hydroxide to give zinc hydroxide and ammonium sulfate. That is the soluble salt. This is gelatinous white. Gelatinous white. Precipitate. This is soluble in excess. So when it dissolves, it dissolves into a colorless solution. 
So this precipitate plus ammonium sulfate and excess of ammonium hydroxide gives you a compound called tetraamine zinc sulfate plus water. So this is the reaction that happens and this is a colorless solution. And the name of this compound is tetraamine zinc sulfate. The next ion that we will be looking at is copper ion. This we can take copper sulfate plus ammonium hydroxide to give copper hydroxide plus ammonium sulfate. This again is a pale blue precipitate. So this is the color of the precipitate that we get when copper sulfate is mixed with ammonium hydroxide. In excess it is soluble. What happens is, this pale blue precipitate converts into or dissolves into dark or deep blue solution. This we should note down. Precipitate dissolves to form a solution. Copper precipitate plus ammonium sulfate plus excess of ammonium hydroxide gives you a compound tetraamine copper 2 sulfate plus water. This is the inky blue solution. The name of that compound is tetraamine copper 2 sulfate. Okay, so these two are the, the last one is lead. These two are similar, both dissolve in excess. This forms a colorless solution, this forms a deep blue solution. Lead, we make use of the only soluble salt of lead, that is lead nitrate, reacts with ammonium hydroxide. To give lead hydroxide, and ammonium nitrate. Okay. This is a chalky white precipitate which is insoluble. There are two differences that I want to bring to your notice. One is two things that are soluble in excess are zinc and copper. This becomes colorless. This becomes deep blue. How do you differentiate lead and zinc? Both form white precipitate but one is chalky white. Zinc gives gelatinous white and in excess zinc becomes a colorless transparent solution. Lead is insoluble which means the chalky white precipitate continues.